Hello, we're here today with volume two uh, from the Eucharistic Heart of Jesus. And this is um, a message received August 17th, 2003. Jesus, my children, I'm speaking to you from the depth of my Eucharistic heart. My dearest little souls of the world, you must come back to me. I want your love now as never before. I want to protect you as never before. Because our time is not like your time, I can communicate with you in a timeless manner. This is what I wish to tell you. I'm going to share my deepest secrets with you. I'm going to remove the veil from the tabernacle as never before. I want you to know me. I want you to know me in my miraculous form of the consecrated host. I am the bread of life. Yes, and I am Jesus also. I was a humble man who walked your paths of difficulty, want, and hardship. Many treated me badly, so I understand the pain of hurt. We had little money, so I understand the pain of hunger. I was different, so I understand the pain of isolation. Little ones, I am with you. I want to teach you things that people of past times did not learn until they came to heaven. I am doing this because I am raising up a tidal wave of Christians to wash over the shore of badness that has taken control of this world so lovingly created by the Father. This process will cleanse your world making it safe once again for God's children. I'm going to bring you knowledge, wisdom, and love. I'm going to introduce you to the divine to make your hearts burn like furnaces of divine love. You will be given the opportunity to work with me. Children, come with me now. Walk this walk of the divine with me, your savior. Together, we call out to others to join us. In this way, we rise up against evil and reclaim goodness for the world, for its people, and for God in heaven. I am omnipotent. By cooperating with me and working with me, you share in my power. You will learn to love in a way you have never known before. I'm revealing myself in a new way, such as I have never done. Come, let us together pay homage and pledge obedience to God the Father. It is he who decrees this work. Thank him often and deeply for these graces, for with these graces you will help me to save the world. So we have some extraordinary promises there and communications. He wants us to know him in a deeper, more profound way. That is for certain. And those of us who have uh, been living with these and allowing them in would say we feel we know the Lord differently for sure from the time before he sent these graces. But there's also a big emphasis on him, Jesus understanding our sufferings, isolation, hunger, fear, you know, um, that's consoling because in moments where things are topsy-turvy and changing, it's good to know that people in the past, including the Holy Family, experienced this topsy-turvy and changing times with all of the uncertainty that comes with it. But he also tells us that we're going to be okay. Uh, we're going to have his wisdom to work with and that we can work within his power. Now, that itself is rather a liberating thought because if we're working within the Lord's power and the and God's creative power, well, we can be small, can't we? We can be humble. We can be uh, like trusting children and allow God to give us what we need, Jesus to uh, allow us to study him, get to know him, and bring that representation out into the world. Others will recognize 
that representation that is Christ. And isn't that why really he's allowing us to get to know him so well? First and foremost, Jesus gives us gifts and blessings, graces for ourselves. He's firstly concerned with us flourishing. And flourishing doesn't mean having everything we want. Flourishing means becoming stronger, wiser, more mature, more restrained, more thoughtful, kinder, um, more able to manage tumultuous times and emotions. That is us flourishing. So that's even, even that now we've drawn away from into a more mature understanding of what it means to flourish, as opposed to, I want a blue car, I want the perfect job, I decided this is what I want in this way and that way, and kind of um, micro-dictating the elements of our life. Now, I think we should decide what we want and go after it. Clearly, if I didn't do that, you know, I, I learned that from God, you know, that he, he wanted us to strive for what we, we felt in our hearts was for us. Um, at the same time, when you are uh, getting to know Christ in the Eucharist, that Eucharistic Jesus, so truly our desires and our wants and our requests to Christ morph into something that's more consistent with knowing him better. And, and our, our request for other people also mature. We're not so much asking that other people be spared all suffering, we're asking at times for their suffering to become manageable, for them to have greater strength, more fortitude, um, determination, and always, our prayer is always that people will get to know Jesus better. Um, truly, the lay apostle, the promise that Christ gave, which in summary is that if you look after my interests, I will look after yours. Many of, For many of us, that lay apostle promise has just become, okay, I'm going to focus on the Lord's work and I'm going to tr entrust all of my family members and my other um, interests to him. And there comes with that a Franciscan buoyancy and joy, you know, that we are free from worry of that. It's been relegated into the divine heart of Jesus Christ in the Eucharist and we serve from there. My friends, volume two is the handbook in some ways of how to walk the walk as a Christian following Christ.